Well, hey everybody, welcome to this free spring into summer editing video. I'm Hudson Henry. I'm gonna take you on a start to finish editing journey through this image of this horse in Southern Patagonia. As you can see in the raw image, it's middle of the day, not so flattering light, not even such a great crop. It's kind of a shot where everything unfolds, the elements are in position. Now, this is the time of day, for those of you that, that follow me and know my kind of mindset about landscape and travel photography, this is the time of the day where maybe I'm out shooting some black and white scenes if the light's dramatic, but mainly I'm just scouting to see where I wanna be in the better light at sunset or at dawn. But this particular day, this horse, some very famous Southern Patagonia peaks down around the town of El Chaton in Argentina. Uh, we've got Cerro Fitzroy and Cerro Torre, you know, two really, really famous peaks down there. This beautiful horse framed. So, you know, I decided this image has all the elements in place. I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do with a color image to get it the best that I can get it. So I'm gonna share some of those tips and tricks with you because I know, you know, sometimes all the elements line up when the light isn't at its best. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna edit this image from start to finish. I'm gonna share the raw file so that you guys can follow along. You know, I, I trust that you'll be careful with, with my copyright of my raw image and you'll just use it for training purposes. And I'm also gonna share a preset of the basic settings that we do in Photo Raw 2017 to get this image looking really great. So this preset's gonna work really well, particularly in this kind of midday light uh, with, with similar sky and kind of mountain meadow scenes. And uh, of course, like any preset, every single image needs to be kind of seasoned to taste. It's, it's more of a really good starting point that gets you say 90% of the way to the image looking like you want it to look but it's still going to require you know a little bit of masking maybe there's contrast being applied to out of focus elements that don't look quite right maybe we need to adjust the exposure just a little bit and, and, and again this is a preset designed for photo raw 2017 so it's going to have some develop settings as well as effects filters uh, it's not going to work with prior versions of on one software it's really going to be designed specifically for photo raw 2017 in a raw file so hope you enjoy let's jump in let's start editing all right so here we are in photo raw 2017's browse app and i'm taking a look at some of my favorite images from from these few days that i spent around el Sheltan. And I'm gonna grab our, our horse image here and I'm gonna first jump into the develop app. And that's where I wanna do just my, my raw uh, processing here. And the, the first thing I'm gonna do is set my white point and my black point. And, and I like to jump into the histogram and sort of highlight this, these little markers here that, that show uh, visual indicators when I kind of blow my highlights. So you can see there that's pure white is turning red right now in the image. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blacks. I'm going to pull it down to where I'm just starting to kind of blow out those blacks. And that's just going to add contrast to my image. Now, I think in this case, because I have such bright blues, I may not want to pull the whites all the way to the edge. I may leave a little shoulder here. Uh, that happens sometimes when you've got kind of a pale blue sky. And I want to go ahead and pull the highlights down to kind of get some of that detail back in the mountains, I'm, I'm kind of moving my data around. You can watch it on the histogram here. And for those of you that aren't super familiar with the histogram, the right side of the histogram represents pure white and the left side of the histogram represents pure black. And if we have uh, you know, our, our distribution of, of tones in the image kind of moving off to the side and, and creating kind of a spike on the side, you, you can tell you've got stuff that's in the pure black range and, and vice versa if you've got a lot of stuff moving off to the right and it's kind of a big spike on the right. Uh, like if we pulled whites way over, you see that we've, we've blown out our whites and that's something we want to avoid. Um, then I'm gonna probably add just a little bit of structure, but you know, it's interesting. I'm gonna jump back here into the nav view. Uh, when we add structure to the image, if, if I add too much at this phase, sometimes I start getting kind of little crunchy edges in my out of focus details. And, and that's something I want more fine tuned control over. So I tend to, add, it adds it adds amount of contrast, particularly to contrast to, to edges between highlights and shadows. And I don't want to overdo that at the develop 
at the develop stage, I want to be able to mask that out like I can when I get into effects and I'm using effects layered uh, workflow with its filters. So I'm going to hold off on adding too much structure right now. I'm always a little bit we le kind of leery of that. Uh, and, and I'm going to be pretty happy right now with with just this is the develop size. I might add just a little contrast or actually back the contrast off a little bit. You know, it's it's always a good idea to kind of make big aggressive moves. And and if those those highlight and and um and black warnings are bothering you, you can always jump back into the histogram and just turn those back off. Um, so that gives us a little bit better view of what of what contrast is doing for us. I'm going to back contrast off just a little bit, and then. I'm going to go ahead with without even doing much more. You know, I've got all these other things that I could do. I could add glow curves, color adjustments, but instead, uh, there's not that much that I want to do at the raw at the, or at the develop stage of this. I'm going to jump into effects, and, and I'm going to use the power of the masked uh, filter stack here. I'm going to use the layered masked power of Photo Raw 2017, and we're here working non-destructively on a raw file. And that's one of the things that I just love the most about this. And I'm gonna jump into the tone enhancer uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull those highlights back even a little bit more. I'm gonna grab some more contrast here. You can see I start to get even more power here in effects tone enhancer. The controls let me go a little bit further than they do in develop. And I don't wanna to go too far because I start getting this kind of like unnatural halo around the horse. But I'm going to go to just about the point where I don't have that, but I'm still getting quite a bit of gain here. And then the same thing with shadows. I'm going to just boost shadows up a little bit. And the same, I'm going to move contrast around just a little, kind of get that look that I want. That's adding a little bit of contrast. Uh, and then I think if we jump up to the histogram, this compression slider... It's just going to kind of it's going to accentuate the midtones of the image, and you can actually see all the all these different colors and all of our tonal distributions kind of moving into the midtone of the image. If on the right is white, on the left is black, we're kind of compressing stuff into the midtones and getting a lot more midtone contrast and detail here. And once again, you know, if I pull that all the way up, I'm going to start to get a really unnatural looking image. That's not the look that I'm going for. I I want a nice natural look but i do want to accentuate those midtones quite a bit so compression is a real powerful slider if you take a look here you can see it's a big change right there so next i'm going to add one of my favorite filters it's one that i add to just about every landscape image that i create it's dynamic contrast and i have my own little style here hudson's dynamic contrast that i've set up uh, it's really easy to do if you go here into the into the more drop down uh, once you've got the settings the way that you like them you can just save a new style when you click on that you can name it how you want it'll put it right up here at the top so i've got my own it, it adds a little bit of small detail uh, that's 12 for medium details. And what that means is as I as I pull the slider, you'll see it kind of accentuates the finer details in the image or the medium kind of goes with the a little bit chunkier lines of contrast in the image. Large is really focused on those really big lines. It, it lets you just target where that contrast is going. Getting back to where I want to go is as simple as clicking on my little style again. I also turn the opacity down a little bit. I often find that that works really well uh, with the filters and effects as you kind of go a little further than you want and then just back the opacity of that one filter layer back down. You can see how it, it blends back in here. And again, all I have to do is, is just click on my style to get back to where I wanted. So we've got those two. Now, one thing that I want to be really careful of here is I'm starting to add some kind of crunchiness to the edge here where, where my image should really be out of focus. So I'm just going to quickly and, and simply grab my masking brush here and I'm going to just I can I can make the size whatever I want here. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead maybe turn the opacity down a little bit so it's not a, a hard uh, you know hundred percent drawing this out painting this out. Uh, I'm gonna use a hundred percent feather which gives me a nice kind of soft edge to this brush. And I'm just gonna make sure that I paint that that contrast out of that uh, particularly these edges that are out of focus in this particular image. And, and really shouldn't have a bunch of contrast added to them. So I'm just going to hit these kind of hard edges that I don't necessarily want 
any contrast added to. Uh, you know, another thing I'm noticing here, I, I, I'm not so happy with the horse being so dead center in this particular image. So I'm just going to go ahead and crop this composition. You know, when, when you encounter a scene like this, uh, I thought I was here in free form. Uh, when you go ahead, when you encounter a scene like this, sometimes you don't have the same amount of time that you might if you were on a tripod in your traditional landscape scene. You know, the horse is in just the right spot. You got this spectacular landscape. Two of the most famous peaks in the whole area are framed up right behind the horse. You just you just take the shot and you go ahead and crop for that composition that you're looking for later. So one thing I'm doing here, you know, I had this bit of distracting cloud up here up at the top and I, I find that kind of pulls my attention up there so I'm cropping that out I'm really focusing us in on the horse and the scene uh, I want to go ahead and, and put the horse at about this top right rule of thirds position where our rule of thirds lines intersect with one another um, I want to really focus in on the part of the, the sky that has clouds. I'm going to avoid having this little bit of cloud in, in the top left that's a bit distracting. And I want to crop it in a way that my, my kind of horizon line between the mountains and the meadow isn't dead center. So I, I'm going to go ahead. There's a little bit of distracting ground right here. I can go ahead and pull my composition up a little bit. It only puts our, our rule of third line a little bit closer to the horse's face. Uh, and, it, and it moves that horizon line down towards the thirds line. It's never good to have that horizon line dead in the center. So I'm really, really liking that. I'm going to just go ahead, hit enter, and accept that crop. And, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into uh, the color enhancer. And I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll go through and, and look at what some of the different styles look like. But I have a feeling I'm going to want to go ahead and, and do my own look here. I like increased color a lot. Actually, I might go ahead with increased color. Increased color looks really good. There we go. Boom. It's giving me just the kind of look that I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to have a look fast here at, at blue. And, and, you know, we can go ahead and increase the saturation. Now you can see that's doing some interesting things to the sky, but it's also there's a lot of blue in these mountains. I don't like at all what it's doing to them. But I'm just going to focus here on the sky for a second and bear with me. Uh, I'm really going to not look at what it's doing to the mountains. I'm just going to look at the sky. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if maybe I can use the masking brush. Uh, turn up the opacity a bit. We're going to just about completely mask here. Turn on the perfect brush. And then, you know, let's go ahead, soft perfect brush. That's making it so that the only part of the image that's really being affected is this part where I'm keeping this little negative crosshair. The negative tells me I'm painting out. So these parts of the scene that seem like they're blued up mountains, I'm just going to go ahead and paint that out. And it seems to be working really well. As long as I don't cross this little minus symbol uh, over the horse, it won't do anything to that tone of the horse or up into the sky. You can see how it just knows that edge. As long as I don't cross that edge, it's really going to target where I'm doing this adjustment. And I'm just able to paint that blue out. You know, and I, I would probably, oops, there I crossed over just a little bit. I can go ahead and just hit. Uh, Apple Z or, or command control Z on the uh, PC and just paint that back. That's just going to undo my last move. It's the same as going up to the edit menu and hitting undo. So I'm just going to go ahead, keep painting this out. It's looking good to me. I'm also going to go ahead, turn off the perfect brush and, and paint that whole thing out of the, uh, the horizon line here because I think there was a little blue kind of added to our contrast line there and it gave us an unnatural look. So there you go. Now you can see I'm just really targeting the sky uh, and, and I didn't paint it completely out but, but pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and paint it completely out of that contrast line between the grass and the sky. I don't want to be adding any blue in there. So there you go. Looking, looking really good. And then I think really the last thing that I want to do to this particular image is, is add a vignette. 
Uh, and I, I'm a huge fan of the big softy vignette. Pretty much if you've watched me do my editing videos, you'll see me working with the big softy vignette. One thing I like to do is, is really target where that vignette is and size it just the way that I want. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller uh, and I want to go ahead and, and, and just place it exactly where I want. If I grab this, uh, this targeting tool and I hold down the option key, I can kind of drag it around. So as I hold the option key or the alt on the PC, I can drag it around to where I'm really just making sure it's centered right over the horse. Then I can size it just like I want and turn that feather back up to 100% and then just play with my brightness and get it just like I'm looking. So all of our attention is really focused on the horse here. And then, you know, at, after adding all these effects, one of the beauties of, of working with raw and effects is that I can jump back in here and say, you know, maybe I wanna turn those shadows up just a little bit more. And I can watch these raw processing movements propagate all the way through uh, and, and go all the way through the effects stack. You know, one of the things I'm really, really happy about with Photo Raw 2017 is that you can also just turn off different layers in the effects stack and see what's going on there. So now I want to go ahead and create a preset for you guys. So how would I do that? I'm going to just go up here into settings. I'm going to choose save settings as a preset. Uh, and I can put them into Hudson's spring into summer presets and I'll go ahead and name it uh, It's gonna be Hudson midday Mountain Meadow and I'm gonna save both the develop settings that we use and the effects settings Boom, there you go. Well, I've already created that for you guys But I'm just giving you kind of an example of how you would go about creating that preset uh, if we were to go back into browse, you can see that we've got another couple of these horse images from the middle of the day, along with just a, a meadow image uh, of clouds of the crazy Patagonian sky. I could go ahead and select all three of those kind of middle of the day images in this mountain meadow and jump into presets. There I am. I'm, I'm in my Hudson Spring into Summer category. Click on that preset, and boom, you'll see all three of these images. Uh, well, you know, they're going to take a little bit of tweaking. You can see we've still got some real blue in the mountains. Uh, there might even be a little banding here in the sky, but, you know, it's given us that kind of higher mid-tone contrast, lots of shadow detail coming out, kind of suppressing those highlights, getting us some of the blue in the sky. Uh, it's a real quick way to get a long ways towards your finish edit. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed walking through uh, this edit of my Patagonian horse scene. Uh, maybe it makes you think a little bit about sometimes some images that you get that really matter to you in the middle of the day and some ways to kind of bring out some some vibrancy, some color, and some 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 shadow and mid-tone detail in those images and, and really get, uh, you know, a kind of a whimsical look for, for a middle-of-the-day image, deal with that harsh light in a way that kind of mitigates its, its negative impact on your scene. So... Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying all the amazing spring into summer videos. We've got some great people doing some great videos. Uh, again, you know, there's the raw files included with this video along with this preset. I hope you guys enjoy and we'll see you next time.